we had been talking about uh, supply driven program and uh, it proved that in particularly in sanitation that program doesn't succeed much then the demand is generated through various activities and really for getting the demand the community should feel that it is necessary for them we would just call it a felt need and for the uh, felt need we have to take efforts about the working with the community now for this again facilitation by government and action by community was the norm which was established and uh, naturally for this work somebody had to be there and that job was absolutely necessary for managing the program i like to stress on some historical events in the case of uh, sanitation especially actually in india gandhi ji's followers had been working in sanitation field since 1920s the government came in at a very late stage actually when the particularly when the international water supply and sanitation decade started in 1980s how the communication helps is something which we could see here this is this was what was done long back in 1965 when sanitation word was not in the dictionary of the government we started from that stage this is how in one village in uh, devu in maharashtra <coughs> we did this communication activities now shouting about this latrine in the streets of the village was something very novel at that time actually it was a matter of ridicule for that matter but we did it and we had this kind of a procession and all that with all the other relevant uh, communication uh uh methods which we could use and in the at the end of it we had a meeting with villagers where most of the adults attended and in that meeting we took a decision that the latrines will be constructed in the village of course this was preceded by a number of activities by me as a uh, 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 i am actually from the medical field so i insisted more on the health aspect of the sanitation and in this meeting what i would like to stress is uh, that also was something new at that time we i told the villagers it was decided that the latrines will be constructed in the village i told them that i am not going to do it i am not a contractor if you want latrines you do it yourselves i said that for atma shuddhi dev shuddhi is important and for dev shuddhi latrine is important and that's how the things moved in those days obviously this was a totally different way of working that time and now we say that these are the various means of communication now exactly that is the place where the ngos would play a very major role in all the development programs after independence many other gandhian workers also came in and after international water supply and sanitation decade the term ngo was brought into picture before that it was a voluntary agency so this ngo has a broader meaning which we have got to understand and that's where we are 
uh, uh, that will be a very important step in our utilization of the NGOs. Now, where the NGOs can play the role or where these voluntary agencies can play the role in a sanitation activity, mean four stakeholders are there, important stakeholders, that is a welfare state, the beneficiary, the financing authorities and the uh, uh, technical component of it, the technicians, the ones who construct the activities. Now these stakeholders are very important stakeholders in the whole process. As you will see here, it is very important that each stakeholder should have a understanding and communication with other stakeholders. Now, when we talk about these responses, if response is active from all, the program will work very well. If one of them is lagging behind, it may somehow continue. And uh, if all have a negative approach, nothing will happen. The sluggish or negative response needs to be changed. And how it can be done? It can be done by the uh, communication and the various methods which have been uh, uh, written down here. Now in this case, sluggish or negative response, the communication links have to be established. The activities which I mentioned in the previous slide have to be undertaken. Who will do that? Broadly, we say community. Community means what? Who are the community? How they are represented? Now, are they the elected members in the village panchayat? Are they the issue leaders? Who are these people? That is something we have to think about. And uh, what we feel is that an NGO can play a very important role there coordinating the activity, coordinating the way of thinking of all these four stakeholders so that something, the whole program progresses well. Now, in, there, there is one more important thing. How relevant is this theoretical discussion with the WASH activities in rural areas? My experience says that this component is the most important and the example I have already showed to you what the communication methods can do right in the beginning. I showed you some slides, the photographs which were taken, which were, which was the activity undertaken by us long back in 1965. And the result from that was wonderful. In one month's time, we could conserve 100 latrines. We formed a sanitation uh, latrine construction committee. That committee took all the responsibility. The work was carried out on no profit, no loss basis. And in one month, we could conserve 100 latrines of good quality. And some of those latrines, why some, most of those latrines are still existing and functioning. Besides these NGOs, there could be other dedicated workers and all that. It's quite possible. We have to trace them out and see how best they could be utilized. We have experienced that there is one more very important group, the spiritual leaders and uh, 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 their groups. They are a very important place through whom the message for sanitation can be passed on. Actually, at present, uh, in Maharashtra, a wari for Pandarpur, for Vittal Temple, is going on, which is uh, in which 
lakhs of people walk on foot from their villages to Pandarpur. When Maharashtra or state government has now placed a Swachhata Dindi, we call these groups of pilgrims as Dindis, there is a Swachhata Dindi now in that group, in that uh, uh, worry, that uh, the whole uh, lot of nearly 5 lakhs, 4 lakhs people moving on, on foot, with uh, uh, about 13, 14 halts on way, where the Swachhata Dindi spreads the messages of sanitation, <coughs> we have taken meetings of the leaders of those Dindis, Pramukhs, Dindi Pramukhs, and they said that they will include sanitation in their kirtans. Now that will give a tremendous impact. It is giving a tremendous mm -hmm. impact on these uh, various communication strategies. Now with this concept when we move on and we talk about involving the NGOs, NGOs have some positive strengths like dedication to the cause. That is one of the most important characteristics of the NGOs. Now, subsequently I will talk about these NGOs also when you will realize the difference in these things. Then the confidence that they have, acceptance that they have from the community is equally important. They can, they will have positively very good IC skills. Then, as far as sanitation is concerned, I would claim that at present only NGOs have the appropriate technology, knowledge for sanitation. I won't talk about water, I will talk about sanitation. And that has a long history which we have to understand. Unfortunately, even the government engineers in the employment are not very much aware of these rural technologies which are positively different from urban technologies. Urban technologies cannot be dumped on rural areas that will not be appropriate. Then they have certain flexibility in their approach, no orders, no GRs, nothing. They have a flexibility in their approach. Then they have a procedural freedom to some extent. Then their non-political nature is also an important asset for them. Then the skills for coordination of different uh, stakeholders is again a very important thing. With the resource base which they naturally have and the ability to undertake R&D work involved in this. Quite a lot of R&D work at present as far as rural sanitation is concerned is not done by NIRI or some such institutions, it is done mainly by NGOs. Of course there are limitations also for the NGOs. One is their limited field of operation, second is their inadequate financial resources, then limited infrastructure which they have, then the administrative weaknesses which they have, they may not respond to your letters also many times. And the important thing, they are impulsive sometimes because they are involved in that cause which may not be liked by many officials. But this impulsiveness is without malice. They only are related to the particular cause 
and not to the individual. <coughs> But you have five minutes. Okay. I'll finish it. Thus, the role of the NGOs in wash activities is enumerated here. The facilitation at various levels, IC and capacity development, then uh, uh, training activities which are very important, which NGOs are doing very efficiently, research and development, <coughs> consultancy, Here are some of the pictures of the work which is being done by the NGOs. Now here NGOs are NGOs facilitating the PRA exercise. Then various groups can be tackled. This is a particular women's meeting being addressed. Another women's meeting, this is in Meghalaya actually. Then the NGO addressing the village meeting. Then the NGO is training engineers actually. In fact, this was done by me in one state. All their engineers were uh, uh, trained about the technologies stupid Latin technology and believe me, they themselves say that they were not very aware of this technology and how it could be actually implemented in the field. Then training of the masons, how the Latin could be constructed, training the trainers, then training the members of the Gram Panchayat and the village leaders, effecting a Shramadhan in the village, some sort of clinical, uh, the cleaning activities, solid waste management activities, this is being done by an NGO in Tamil Nadu in Velour. They are doing it very nicely. Now the selection of NGO is an important. Now the concerned official, concerned government functionary will have to find out what are the strengths of the particular NGO and whether that NGO would be useful for their own requirements. And in that case, these will be the considerations for selection, the area of operation, their skills, their knowledge base, and finally, I have intentionally mentioned avoiding influences during the course of selection. Because this is what we have many times noticed in the field. There is one more requirement. The, if the NGO is good, if you feel that the selection is good, the NGO may be deficient in many things. If we want to get optimum results from that NGO, we can do something for strengthening those NGOs in different areas. Funding is another important thing. NGOs don't have necessarily a fund base. It's not a uh, not from corporate world. It's not government. It depends. Works on donations and whatever implementation work that uh, particular NGO does in the field. What we have noticed many times is when the funds are not available with the government. NGO is called in, presuming that funds will not be necessary for work if they utilize the services of the NGO, which is not true. NGO has its own expenses which have to be managed, which have to be arranged. One important role that the NGO can play is the key resource center. They have a knowledge base. They have training abilities. In Maharashtra, actually, uh, one KRC has been allotted one district. I mean, district-wise, KRCs have been established there. And in Maharashtra, as I said, in KRCs, 
uh, we have three groups. One is the voluntary agencies. Another is government establishments like Gram Shivak Training Centers. And the third group is the Gadi Baba, Gargi Baba Award winners, winner villages. They have certain skills. We could utilize those skills. And this strengthening could be done as and when necessary. Marching towards the goal is important. Let's start marching. The people will follow us.